Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone. Eid Mubarak to you and your families once again. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, bless your families, grant you an accepted Ramadan, accept all of your ibadat in Ramadan and beyond, and allow your good deeds to continue bi'idhnillahi ta'ala and allow your final destination to be al-firdaus al-a'la with our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and his family and companions, Allahumma ameen. So I know you all are missing Ramadan already, the Qur'an 30 for 30, the nightly bond that we had over the Qur'an, the daily Jannah series, the late night talks, the tarawih khatiras. Ramadan is really that season. So I again want to thank all of you that have been tuning in. And I also want to remind you that it's not over. Yes, alhamdulillah, you know, we do a lot in Ramadan. But this channel is going to remain busy. So keep tuning in, inshallah ta'ala, to the wonderful content that we'll be producing. We'll be producing, you know, the short tips on how to keep yourself engaged, inshallah, after Ramadan. Uh, we will be producing new content, bidnillahi ta'ala, with Imam Tom, a new podcast that's starting with him, inshallah ta'ala, and a new series that's also going to start with him, bidnillahi ta'ala, shortly afterwards. We will have a mini documentary. Some of you have seen the mini documentary on the martyrs of Mu'ta. If you haven't, scroll down and watch it, inshallah ta'ala, where I had a chance to visit the site of the Battle of Mu'ta, where Zayd radiallahu anhu was buried, where Ja'far radiallahu anhu was buried, where Abdullah ibn Rawah radiallahu anhu was buried. So this is going to be a longer one because many of the prominent companions died in the plague of Amwas. So Abu Ubaidah ibn Jarrah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu, and others, bidnillah. So please look out for that, inshallah ta'ala. And we'll also have a webinar on the concept of Jahannam. Why? Because we spoke so much about Jannah as we should. And I hope that we've all connected ourselves to Jannah. So then what's the point of Jahannam and what are some of the contrasts of the people of fire and the fire itself? And why does it exist? And how can we also meaningfully connect to the concept of fear of fire while at the same time aspiring for the highest reward of Al Jannah? We have a lot more coming out, inshallah ta'ala. So please tune in and catch up on the old stuff. Catch up on the Angels series if you didn't get a chance to watch that. Or watch Angels 2. Maybe you didn't even know there is an Angels 2. Or Meeting Muhammad Sallallahu Or the Day of Judgment series. Or catch up on the Habit series and some of the other great content that we have that isn't Ramadan specific. The point is, keep yourself engaged. And as for the firsts, we'll be starting that in a few weeks with the night time as well. We'll be restarting. And I look forward to that, inshallah ta'ala. So this video, I wanted to make about questions about shawwal. Um, and specifically, you know, questions surrounding the fasting of shawwal. But before I get there, you know, this month, subhanAllah, is special specifically for the reason that it gives us a chance to sustain what we have gained in Ramadan. That's literally what this is. This is your post-workout month. This is your recovery month. This is your month where, inshallah ta'ala, you show that that trajectory that you have intended in Ramadan is one that you intend to stay upon. When you look at the Islamic calendar, the sacred months, the, the months in which fighting was forbidden and in which there's greater sanctity, are the Qi'da, the Hijjah, Muharram, and Rajab. And then, of course, you have the month of Ramadan, which, though it's not one of the sacred months in that sense, the sanctified months in that sense, it's the greatest month of the year. And you had Sha'ban before Ramadan, where it's a neglected month, right? Because people wait for Ramadan to get started. But as we talked about in Sha'ban, it's important to use that to get ready for Ramadan. Shawwal comes around, and Shawwal has the potential to make your Ramadan meaningful for a lifetime. Now, let's talk about this, inshallah ta'ala, especially when it comes to fasting. Allah Azawajal has given us a gift through our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that whoever fasts the month of Ramadan, and then follows it with six of Shawwal, it is as if they have fasted an entire lifetime. Kasliyami Dahr. The Prophet ﷺ explained that because deeds are at minimum multiplied by 10, every good deed at the minimum is multiplied by 10. Therefore, one month of Ramadan is multiplied by 10, and that becomes 10 months, and six days of Shawwal multiplied by 10 becomes two months. So if you do this on a regular basis, Imagine meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala having fasted every single day of your life. Ya Allah, grant us that reward. That you meet Allah Azza wa and you are someone, it's as if you fasted every day of your life. And that's just the minimum. So this is a gift that we have to avail ourselves of bidnillahi ta'ala and take advantage of. Now there are a few questions that come up. Um, one of them is, what if I have makeup days from Ramadan? 
do I make up the days first or do I fast the six of Shawwal uh, first? Now, some of the scholars said that a complete Ramadan means completing the fasting of Ramadan. And the obligatory fasting takes precedence over the voluntary fasting because at the end of the day, Shawwal is a voluntary fast. Uh, and this opinion works especially if you don't have too many days to make up. Okay, if you don't have too many days to make up. So let's just state the opinion that some of the scholars said you have to finish the fasting of Ramadan before you can fast the six days of Shawwal because obligatory takes precedence over the voluntary. Other scholars said, and this is the majority, that you can in fact fast the six days of Shawwal before making up the days of Ramadan. The evidence that they use for that is that the days of fasting Shawwal are limited to the time of Shawwal, whereas the days of making up Ramadan extend throughout the year. So you have a limited window in which you could fast those six days of Shawwal, and you have the entire year to make up your fast of Ramadan. Our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha uh, mentioned making up days of Ramadan in Sha'ban, the next year prior to Ramadan. Some of the scholars said, how could it be the, that our mother Aisha radiallahu anha would have missed out on that reward, fasting Shawwal prior to that. And then there's another opinion that min Shawwal, six from Shawwal means Shawwal onwards. And so some of the scholars, especially from the Maliki school, did not see that the six of Shawwal are limited to Shawwal, but it just means six days after Ramadan. Now, I want to say, and, and inshallah, I hope that this is sort of a way of balancing all of this, that if a person has just a few days of Ramadan to make up and they think that they can make up the days of Ramadan first and they can fast the six of Shawwal reasonably, then that is the best route to go. Allah knows best. But if a person has many days of Ramadan to make up and they don't think that they're going to be able to fast the six days of Shawwal if they make those days up, then take the opinion of the majority. You fast the six days first, and then you try to make up the Ramadan days as soon as you possibly can, inshallah ta'ala. So this is my opinion on this, and Allah knows best. Again, it's a way of balancing the two predominant opinions in this regard. If you can make up the days first, make up the days first. Now, another question that comes up is, do I fast them consecutively or do I uh, break them up? So, you know, some of the scholars recommended um, that a person fasts the six days of Shawwal immediately after Eid. And they said that for multiple reasons. They said it's the preferred route and your body is physically already adjusted to fasting and this is a continuation. It ensures that you get the six days done because I'm sure some of you have had that experience where you know you had three down, four down, and then the end of Shawwal creeped up on you and you didn't get a chance to make them up or to fast those days. So many of the scholars recommended doing them right away. Others say that it is actually probably preferable if you want to have a longer habit to combine those days with other days of voluntary fasting because that will give you a habit inshallah going forward. So for example, you can combine the six days of Shawwal with fasting Mondays and Thursdays or fasting the 13th, 14th and 15th of the month, which are rewardable days. You cannot combine an obligatory fast with a voluntary fast, but you can combine a voluntary with a voluntary. Meaning what? You can have multiple voluntary intentions. So the reward of fasting Monday, as well as the reward of fasting one of the six of Shawwal. And if a Monday or Thursday falls in one of the three days of the month, then you can combine all three intentions. And perhaps this will give you a greater reward and it'll give you an opportunity, inshallah, to, to start paying attention to those days throughout the year. So it's best either to fast them right away or to space them out and perhaps try to have them combined with some of those other days. But of course, at the end of the day, look, if you're able to fit in those six days at any point, inshallah ta'ala, then the reward of fasting the six of Shawwal will be realized. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he allows all of us to realize that reward bit the night. Now, also, uh, I just want to advise that when you fast these six days of Shawwal, try to do other good deeds in those days as well. So, you know, Try to make them as Ramadan oriented as possible. Have a portion of the Quran that you recite that day, just like you would in Ramadan, your daily recitation of Quran. 
if you can catch Fajr in the Masjid, Maghrib in the Masjid perhaps, or Isha in the Masjid that day. The point is, try to have some of those Ramadan ingredients in your Shawwal fast as well. The athkar that you would make in Ramadan, the dua that you would do in Ramadan, try to also incorporate them inshallah ta'ala into your Shawwal fast so that they can maintain some of those special ingredients. Again, this is a month of sustaining your gains ta'ala. May Allah allow all of us to catch these six days of Shawwal to reap the full blessings of them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be amongst those that are pleasing to Him at all times and that are granted the abode of His pleasure. Jannat al-Firdaus with our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullah khaira. Again, look forward to being with you for the months ahead inshallah ta'ala. Uh, we will continue to try to produce what we can and we appreciate your dua, your support and your continued engagement. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi